Had a Show podcast, I have a very, very special guest, a unique guest. Uh, he wants to do some courageous things for the city of Houston. Uh, but my connection with him is when I first got to Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Julian Martinez, Beamer Preventive. Uh, preventive, is it still care or just Beamer Preventive? Preventive maintenance, yes. Preventive maintenance. Uh, I just called it Beamer my whole life. Uh, this guy has been the only hand that had touched my car for several, several years during what I call my teens when I first got to Houston. And my good friend Tim called me and said, he wants, you. Julian is running for mayor. I said, Julian from Beamer? Yeah, yeah. Got to put him on a podcast. I'm like, yeah, we got to do that then. So here he is in the flesh. I hadn't seen him for a very, very long time, so it's good to reacquaint myself with a guy that actually played a huge part in my automobile life in Houston, Texas. The only hands that touched my Beamer, and I think he was very surprised because I drove it here today just so he could see it. The Beamer is still here, still running, still in good shape, and primarily because of the care that uh, Mr. Julian put into it. So I want to thank you for that. Never really had a chance to thank you for that, and welcome to the podcast. It's great to have you here. I want to get into you being the mayor of Houston, Texas, and why you want to do such a crazy thing in such a wild city. But let's go back. Let's find out who Julian is, because I, I I never thought to even ask. I assume that here's the guy that's been taking care of my car all these years, and I never got into the personal story of who Julian is. And we started having and I had to stop you like, no, I, I, I want to get this all on tape, so to speak. So who is this guy from the Dominican Republic? Well, thank you, Mr. Mr. Benjamin, <laughs> for having me here today. It's an honor to be here. He always called me Benjamin, by the way. It's yeah. an honor to be here. It's an honor to have you. Well, my story is very simple. I came to the United States in 1971 in New York. Mm. I went through high school there. And because my English was a very bit rusty, still is probably. <laughs> no, you're great. <laughs> but uh, I had several part-time jobs, went to high school. Then uh, when I was cleaning the floors... In, in the hospital, my father used to tell me, Julian, you should go to Houston, Texas. It's a good place to start a family. I said, really? But at the, I remember the hospital, the cafeteria, they have a couple of pictures of Astroworld. Uh, <laughs> the, the Astro, Astroworld, they also have uh, 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 the, the, the seven wonders of the world. Oh, the Astrodome. Astrodome. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I said, yeah. that's pretty cool. <laughs> so anyway... So I went through high school, so then I decided to become become a mechanic because my English was kind of very, very bad then because I came to high school in the ninth grade mm. from DR. And back then, they don't have any bilingual teachers. I just sat. And wow. I just sat wow. at the chair. And I passed everything with my hand. Make, you know, anything with my hand, I passed it through. So then I decided in 76 when I graduated, to go to mechanical school in Brooklyn, New York. So I used to travel from Harvestro to Brooklyn 40, 50 miles every day and then go to, go to work from 3 to 11 every day. So when I graduated from, um, from mechanical school, I met my wife, Carmen, in high school, and so we, we got married in 78. Wow. So she said, you know, Julian, I like to leave this little town. I like to move somewhere. Okay. So I had an uncle in, in Florida, in Port St. Lucie. I said, well, let's, I'm going to visit my uncle. And uh, so I went there. I found a job making three twenty an hour as a technician. So then my wife came along. We got married. So then uh, uh, after six months, I had a desire. I said, I had to come to Houston because my father told me to come to Houston. So I had a little, uh, I have a little van Three on the fly, like they said, Chevy. <laughs> I said, honey, put everything in the, in the van. Let's go to Houston. Back then, there was no cell phone. <laughs> I didn't buy any map. So I, I look at the map at the, at, the, at, the, at the dealership. I say, if I take uh, the turnpike, I 10 and read, I, I make it to Houston. <laughs> so that's what happened. So, so, so anyway, so we come to Houston. And when I come to Houston, I was so surprised. It looked all raggedy, you know. <laughs> the entrance I ten back then and Bay yeah, Town. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, coming from Florida, New York, it looks like I was back home, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so 
So I made a left on 610. I went to 45. And then I said, man, this thing's kind of ugly and, <laughs> and, and raggedy. Honey, I don't think my, my dad was wrong. Houston's not the place for me to start a family. <laughs> so anyway, so at that weekend, we went to San Jacinto Battleground. We visited all the amusement park that they had then. Mm. And then, honey, Sunday morning, we're going to go back to, 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 to uh, Florida. And then there was a motel on 45, Galena Motel. Mm-hmm. It was like those, those things you rent, like a little house, and you do your own cooking. Yeah. That's what yeah. I rent there. Okay. And there was uh, 45. So there's honey. So when I was exiting Houston on, on, on 59, I see this beautiful police car and motorcycle. I thought that's kind of cool, right? Mm-hmm. You don't see that in New York. So then we went back to Houston, to, to uh, we went back to Florida. So then my 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 house lease was over in in April. So I had to return the house. I had a job in Miami. I was making a little money, but it was too expensive to live in Miami. I said, "Honey, you're not working. You go to school." So I can't live in Miami. We had to go back to New York. So we put in gas. I had a little BMW, 1600, 1971, and the, and the Chevy van. So I put all my tools, everything, in the car. And then we, we go to the gas station to, uh, at 95. We put gas. I said, honey, what should we do? She goes, Julian, let's go back to Houston again. Again to Houston? <laughs> I said, okay, let me go inside. Let me buy a map. So I bought a map. I like green thing, you know. So I look at the map. I see green thing, you know, like a, a six, uh, like a 59 South, the Galleria area, Memorial. Mm-hmm. And that looks pretty nice. <laughs> so then this time I bought a map. So this time I went straight 59. Remember, it said Victoria South. Mm-hmm. I asked a Hillcroft. There's a hotel there. It's still there, Hilton. So I stayed there. That weekend, then um, Monday morning, I knew there was a dealership being the Lado Center. I'm, I'm, I'm finding 59. Mm-hmm. So early morning, like six o'clock in the morning, I was there looking for a job. So when I got there, uh, they say, "Who are you?" I said, "Oh, I'm Julian. I just, I just in town. I don't, I don't have anybody here. I don't have any family. I just looking for a job." I say, "No problem. Wait till eight o'clock." So I wait eight o'clock. So I look like this guy come out, Enzo, very happy. Hey, what's your name? I'm Julian Martinez. What do you want to do? I'm looking for a job. Sure, what can you do? I said, I'm a mechanic. I went to school for BMW. I can clean. I do anything. Wash car. He said, sure. You got tools? <laughs> sure. So I bring the tools down. He put me to work. This is not go- This story is not going to work in 2023, by the way. This is beautiful time. Go ahead. <laughs> I did not ask how much you're going to pay me. Okay. Because I didn't care. I just want to be connected. Yes, sir. To, to be straight. Mm-hmm. And my wife was waiting in the in the in the in the TV area, waiting area, like around twelve. So guy said, "Hey, I heard you you new in town. You have any family?" I said, "No, we don't have any family. Do you have any? No." I say, "You want to get an apartment?" I said, "Yeah, we get an apartment." So she took my wife to get an apartment. I remember Benjamin. This was beautiful. Before on 559, there was a new apartment, brand new. Mm-hmm. I mean, nobody lived in it. So my wife rented an apartment there. And then that evening, the, the service rider took me to the apartment, second floor, seven pool. I thought I was in heaven. <laughs> Can you imagine? All those beautiful blue water. I, I, thought, I thought I was at a resort. It was hollow, hollow investment. Back, he had a lot of apartment then. Look. I said, man, honey, this is this is heaven here. I called my father, my family. Say, hey, you have to come to Houston. This is beautiful here. <laughs> this apartment, they're crazy. It's so beautiful. So anyway, I said, honey, we're not going to buy a bed. I'm with the second floor. See that carpet? It's nice and plumpy. We're going to buy a nice cover. We're going to sleep on the floor. From <laughs> here, we're going to buy a house. That was my goal. Anyway, so we that for six months. Six months, I bought a house. Wow. And then, oh, to give you a story short, when I got my first check, the guy said to me, here's your check, 975, clean. I said, man, so you made a mistake. I said, what do you mean? You made 975 
I made that in a month in Florida. I said, no, Julian, here you have peace work. Because you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't talk to anybody, you just work. I said, really? That's how it is? Yes. That year, like in six, seven months, I made $45,000. Mm. I heard it before. From there, you know, just I worked for four more years. And then my dad said, I brought my father, my mother, my brother, my friends. Every, I brought like about 100 people from New York. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all doing well. Really? I'm a wow. middle class, upper class. Yes, sir. I because my father used to tell me, you know, Julian, human is it's like a tree. You have, to, you have to find fertile ground to plant yourself. Mm. You know? Okay. I said, really? That's true. So, I mean, I can show you they were doing very well. So they all came in. They all went to UT, Texas, A&M, all the college in Houston. So in, in 85, I need to help my father because my two brothers and my sister, they, he bought a house, and they got married. And my dad, my mom is home. She don't work, and my father working by himself at Memorial. I said, I had to find a way to help my father without I said mm, my wife. Yeah. So I opened up a shop in Richmond. I said, well, that in six months you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna come along. I said, how much money do you need to live? He said, I need about $1,500, $2,000. I said, no problem. So in, two mo- in six months he came in, so I, I gave him a salary Wow. for that. And then after that, you know. Now what gave you the bold idea, right? that you could just start this business? Because it seems like you're doing all these things on the whim. Not necessarily part of your life plan. It's just I'm doing it because it seems right. What made it seem like, because now Beamer has been there for how long? 38 38 years. years. Which is incredible for a business to have been in one place so long. I mean, well, you've expanded, obviously. But that's, you know, just in itself is an incredible story. But what gave you the, um, I, I like to use the word, audacity to believe that this guy from the Dominican Republic who goes to New York, who then goes to Florida, who then comes to Houston and thought our city was ugly initially and then thought it was beautiful lady uh, later. What gave him the audacity to believe that he could start a business? Because essentially you're an immigrant. You come to a place where you know no one and you start a business. What gave you the audacity for you to believe that you could do that? Well, the, back in, in the Dominican Republic, my experience, I work with my father's business. My father used to have a grocery store, and we used to be in, in the country, has coffee plantation mm-hmm. and cows and, and horses. So I see how my father, my father used to buy a cow, not by where he looked at it. He said, two kilo, three kilo, that's how he buy it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the look, like you buy a car now. Mm-hmm. So I learned my father how to navigate, how to do business. And my father always told me, never be afraid. If you feel it in you how you can do it, just do it. Mm. It might not work out the way you want it, but if you stay, you be persistent. Yes, sir. It will work out. That's still good information to this day. So you started. Why? Why a Beamer business? Because you could have went into any business. Because you you said you started off. You were always good with your hands. Why? What made you believe that that was the direction for you to go and specialize in? Well, what I did was when I was working at Beamer Auto Center, I spread some cars to customers. And they used to go to my house on Torquay to do a little, a little work here at night and on the weekend. So when I saw that, I, that I, they can come to my house, I said, well, why not give a, be, a little bit more service and open up a shop? Mm-hmm. And then I contact most of the customers. Then my wife and I, we used to go to every shopping center. We, we made a little brochure. If you see a Beamer, we put a, something on the window. And... That's how we, we started. Wow. That's that's incredible. And here you are after all this time. And your company has turned into like a family business to this yeah. day. Do you, and I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm just curious. At this point uh, where you are in being an entrepreneur, have you ever said to yourself, you know what, my sons, they can take over, even your daughter if she wanted to. I don't know how deep into it she is, but I could turn this over. I don't really have an interest in doing it anymore. Uh, what is it? that makes you still get up in the morning and still want to do this? I have a desire. I, I have still. that. I have that desire still. I have a, every morning, I get up in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, and I pray. 
and I get up, I go to the shop, it's like, a, it's like going to the beach. It's like going home. It's a homey place for me. And since my, my wife, my two brothers, my sister, my cousin, everybody works there. So it's, it's just like, it's a, it's a good environment to be around. Mm. And it's a very, as a matter of fact, most, some customer, we finish the car and they don't want to leave. <laughs> they feel good about it in there, you know? So it's because we, we, we I have a, and I love people so much. And that's why I want to go into another step in my life. Mm. You do something good to me, especially black people. In my shop, this is a true story. I will say 70 or higher black people. Really? You know why? Hmm. They drive nice cars. <laughs> it's a fact. <laughs> you go to the shop now, you, you might see six customers, four they are going to be black. Hmm. I never thought about that. Yes. I have to, yeah, I have to think about so that. So I need to, I see, especially you, the black community, they need somebody who can represent them. Mm. And saying, saying I'm, I'm embedded and with them all the time. And I see the pothole, the flood, the crime, the... the well, go back. Stop right there. Because, by the way, for those that might have missed this, yeah. uh, Mr. Julian is running for mayor. What made you wake up one morning... There had to be one particular thing that made you say, you know what, I'm just run for mayor. What what happened that particular day or evening or night or what what you couldn't sleep because what happened was it something you saw, was it something that somebody said to you, was it something what happened to make you say, you know what? I I'm gonna run for the Houston to be Houston mayor. Well, I mean, it's been cooking on me for a long time. Okay. But I didn't think I gonna I gonna have the <laughs> the power to do it, or, or I would say the gut to do it. Mm. Because I'm walking deep water right now, mm -hmm. you know? But I said to myself, you know, I have to do it because every mayor that, that come to Houston, they promise the same thing. For 45 years, they said they're going to help the people, you know, the school, the, the flood, the pothole. There was a customer, a BMW. He had a pothole at Richmond Avenue. Two months ago, it's costing seven thousand dollars to fix his car because of pothole. Mm -hmm. He was he was going fast naturally, but it's still. So every time I'm going home, I say, Julian, you have to be crazy running for mayor. You have a good life. <laughs> right, right. Good life. You made your money already. You don't need any money. But you know what? Sometimes it's not about us. It's about others. So when I come in the morning, I say, you know, Julian. You can't back out. You have to do it. Because if God give you something, if God give you a, something in your heart and you don't do it, you feel regret that you don't do it. Now, what about all the other stuff? Yeah, and I get it. Uh, you got the potholes and things of that nature. But there's so many different things as a mayor um, that you you got to figure out. You know, school, crime, poverty, uh, issues between black, white, Hispanic, what have you. Jobs. What about all those things? When you think about that, what's your, what's your thoughts on all those different things that's going on with the city? Well, I think the city we have to be colorblind. We have the same need, black, white, Spanish, white, same need. We want the safe school, mm -hmm. safe street. I want to be able to sleep and reach my now at night with money in my pocket. Nobody will touch me. Now you do that and you'll be dead. So, so we all have the same need. It doesn't mm. matter the person. So the problem is that most people, they, they do their own need before the other need. Mm. I'm not going to be their mayor. and I'm going to do the people work. And what is more important first, I think there's four things important right now to be a mayor. Okay. The crime, the homeless, the garbage on the street. And school. I want people to have a choice of school. Choice. You have a choice to get a job. So you have a choice to go to school. Like in my side, I give my, my kid a choice of school because I work seven days a week. And I pay for my kid education from pre-K to college. When they graduated my kid, they had no debt. 
I had the debt, but I but I can pay it. Mm -hmm. But when they got when my kid graduated from uh, UT A and M with an engineering degree, they had no debt because we should be able to give them a tool to start this life with no with no problem ahead of them. Mm -hmm. So now my kid they can excel whatever they want because I taught them, teach them to do the right thing and to be debt free if they can. Mm. Now, somebody might say, well, they came from a different circumstance, so they had some advantages that some of the other kids may not have. What about that kid that does not have that advantage? Well, that's a, that's why we have to find a way through the federal government or the state, be able to those kids that don't have the advantage, give them the resource they need mm -hmm. so they can get the education done. Because I say the difference between half and half not is education. Mm. Give an example. Jose Maria, you know the Jose Maria, the little guy? Mm. His daughter went to Elsick High School. She graduated for Skumba Collider. In, 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 so, she, so she went to uh, UT, and she was studying environmental. I said, Jose, told her to switch to mechanical engineering or, or mechanical or petroleum engineering. Or chemical engineering. Mm -hmm. So she, she switched. The second year when she switched, I knew a friend of mine at the dealership that worked at the plant in Pasadena. I said, hey, I have this young lady. She's one of my employee daughter. She needs a job on, on, in the summertime. Uh, I, like internship. I said, sure. She gave me a job. And she, she got a job with them. And she was making... $4,000 a month for three months. So when she when she graduated from, from UT, she went to work for them making $85,000, a 21-year-old mm. person. Before, she was in the bottom. Not because they had no money. Because she didn't have opportunity. Opportunity, yes. But now, we have the... See, some people, they need help or guiding. And right now she's she's upper class. Gotcha. She's doing she, well. She lives in Greywood, expensive house, and and Tesla, and, <laughs> every, and you name it. Everybody needs that kind of opportunity. <laughs> yeah, and it's available. Now let me let me ask you because what happens when you're in politics? There's I don't know how do I put this. There's a certain ebb and flow with politics that unfortunately it seems that you have to play to get things to happen. You got to cut a deal with this. What happens when, you know, for you to get this right here, for you to get those potholes, you know, you have to work with said political figure to get this going because this is what they need. It seems like you can't, when you're in politics, is one reason why I would never really consider it because you have to play so many different games to just get the small things done that you want to accomplish. What happens when you keep getting blocked, so to speak, from making great things happen because you got to work with these people to get this thing done, this thing done, and this thing done to just get some of these things done for the ordinary lady and guy that needs some things done in their community? Well, I'm a good leader, okay? Leader, they lead, they don't follow. So basically... If I know that City of Houston needs some, a project and I don't get my way, I go to the people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We the, we the people. Yes, sir. So that's one thing I, I like about me because I don't know any politician. And uh, you know what? And I don't care. They're not going to see me in happy hour with them, marching <laughs> around. That's not going to happen because when I do my job, I'm going to stay go home. So... I'll be very simple. I'm going to do the people job because, see, I have four grandkids, so almost five. And I say, you know, Julian, you have to do something for them. You have to leave them a safe city so that the kid around them can be safe so they can protect each other. Mm. So that's why I'm doing it, too, because I have, we need to change. We can't continue the same thing and expect a different result. We we have to fix the problem. I admire the uh, I admire you wanting to get into such a interesting game politics, 
uh, and wanting to do for the city, uh, especially having the opportunity to uh, to to go to your business and, and and you help me out, you know, with my car, which brings me to what is it? Why do you think you were so and continue to be successful now in what you have done? I mean, you've grown um, and sure, you probably could have gotten bigger, but you've decided where you are and what you're doing there is good for you. But why have you been so successful doing what you're doing? Well, because I'm persistent and I never lose the spark. I'm always I will, I'm always want to do better in life. And I, I'm consistent. You don't, I don't give up. I'm going to retire when, when God takes me home. Mm. So I'm consistent, and I have a pilot that decided to continue doing what I like, and I love to. First of all, I love to hang out with people. I mean, you give me energy here right now. Yes, sir. I'm energized. So my spirit, some people say, you know, Julian, what are you having you? I say, what do you mean? I say, because when I'm around you, I feel good about life. I say, you know why? Because I love you and you love me, mm. <laughs> you know. So no, I'm 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 passionate what I do, and I don't do it for the money. I just do it because God gave me that favor to be in business, to be in Houston, a great city, and I want to do my part. I want to give back to my city. What's the wife say? This is she's she's been 45 years believing in everything that you say. What was her when you go to her and you say, hey, you know what? I'm thinking about mayor of the city. What's What's her thoughts when you say that to her? Well, she said, no, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do it. You know, I said, honey, it's not about us, you know. He said, but I don't want no publicity, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, You know. my father told me before he died, he passed away just la- la- last year. He goes, you know, Julian, it's so good to have what we have. Nobody know what we have. Only we know what we have, <laughs> you know. Because <laughs> you don't have to put them in your forehead. And say, hey, yeah, I got, I got this. this. Yeah. I got that. <laughs> I said that that's good to have those things. Yes, I said, sir. you know, honey, God's been good to me so much. So it's about time we give to others. Mm. The same way, you know, you know, it's a true story. This morning, I stopped. Eldridge in, in in West Diamond. This beautiful black guy come to me, in the corner with a little sign. But he, he didn't show me the sign. I put the window down. He say, like this, God bless you. He told me that. I said, wow, that's special. And then I said, come back. I get my wallet. I never have any money most of the time. So I put one, I have one bill, $100. I give it to him. He goes, he look at me, look at him. Right away, he go across the street. He was so happy. But you see, one thing led to another. Mm-hmm. He said, Julian, God bless you. Not Julian, but God bless you. Have a good day. Just like that. Mm-hmm. And that opened my heart. So you know what? Let me see if I have something in my wallet. And I have a $100 bill like this, twist, you know? <laughs> and I just give it to him. He was so happy, that guy. You know, so that's that's what life's all about. I went to the shop so happy myself. The hundred dollar would not buy the happiness. Mm. That what he did to me, what I did to him. So you see, that's what life is. About being happy with other people. What would give me one thing that your wife would say? She, why would your wife say that people can believe and vote for Julian Martinez? She would say what? Well, I mean, sh- she knows that if I run for mayor. Whoever's running, I'm going to give the wrong for the money. <laughs> because I'm very known in Houston, especially. I told my bl- black customer, hey, I need your vote. Because <laughs> I've been with you for a long time, and the good time and the bad time. So I need you now to put me in, like I tell people, put me in coach. I'm going to hit the big ones. <laughs> so, so, no, I have to do it because, you know, I'm running out of time. Hmm. I'm 68 years old now. I'm going to be 68. And I got good 30 years, maybe 40, maybe 50. God knows. But whatever I have now going forward. I'm going to make sure you're doing something and getting I'm going to do something to, 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 to the city. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to feel that way. I got you. I mm-hmm. got you. And I got to ask this, Julian. I've never seen you without that coat on in all these years. It's funny. Uh, when you came, when you, when you walked through the door, I knew it was you because I saw the coat, which is weird. Uh, 
but most car places you go to, you know, you go, you talk to a guy. What is it about this Coke that is so important, you know, for you? It's almost like the logo of Beamer. It's, it's almost, they go together like hand in hand. What is it about that Coke? When you walked in, I felt like I'm glad that he wore it too. Because to me, that is Julian Martinez when I saw you. So let me just say that for the record. But why do you wear I never even thought to ask until I, when you walked in. This is a story. In 93, this guy came from Egypt with a black overall like this. I said, Abraham, it was in July. Abraham, why you have that coat? It's too hot. So Julian in Egypt is very hot. So we cover ourselves more. I said, really? See, right now, I see you you sweating and I'm cool. He goes, Julian, why don't you get one? Try it. <laughs> really? Try it. So I, I told the company, give me three. So I put it on. I couldn't take it. Burning inside. I said, well, I could have it on. You were wrong. I said, why? <laughs> it's too hot. But Joe Austin credit. I was flipping the channel one Sunday. And Joe Austin was preaching about this. He said, you know, today when I preach about good habit and bad habit, mm-hmm. he goes, 21 days. He goes, if you say for 21 days, whatever you're doing, it becomes part of you. Okay. Talk about Daniel fast for 21 days. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I believe in the Bible, sir. So say, Julian, you're going to have to put it back. So I put it back. The first five days, I was burning. Six days, I said, oh, God, I got 10 days to go. <laughs> after, after I was the, 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 six, the 16th day, it was getting easier. After that, it became normal. Now, people say, you know, Julia, I said, look, now it's an advantage. Before I used to buy a lot of T-shirt, now they always, they always stay clean. This one, I think it's about 10 years old. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so so now in the winter I'm warm because I have it on. In the summer I'm I'm cold because the sun don't hit my my skin. Mm. So I I'm doing kind of three way way three way wind. Mm-hmm. So that's why my blue jacket. That's interesting. Okay, because it, I thought it was like a part of your uniform, but it was really some guy suggested it, and so you just stuck with it all these years. Oh well, yeah, for ninety well, uh, ninety three, you said. Yeah, that's a yeah, long time. Yeah, tw- now it's part of me. Now it's kind of beauty. When I go to a shop without it, people don't know who I am. <laughs> yeah, if I if you would have walked in here and I didn't see you, now I think I would have been disappointed. I hate to say that, yeah. uh, but it seems so uniquely a part of whom you are. Um, yeah, I, I, when I saw that, it was very because um, we haven't seen each other in a long time. So let me just be frank with you guys. Uh, but the first half of my entire career of Houston, you're an integral part of it because of my car. Uh, so we have that friendship through that. Um, this, for me, is very interesting uh, to get an opportunity to see you. And I'm glad we got a chance to see because you didn't even know you was coming to see me. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm appreciative. I'm going to wish you luck. Politics is not my thing. But here you are, ready to try something. Still here. You still have an energy about you. You still have the same wonderful smile. Uh, you still want to do things for people, and even though you do have a business, I think you, where you really, what the win is for you is how you want to make sure that your customers walk out of your your Beamer place knowing that they got great customer service. And I think that was always important to you. In fact, I know that's important to you and still is now. So here it is now. You want to spread that into this entire city of Houston. I bid you good luck with that. Uh, being in politics is crazy. Uh, it would be interesting to see somebody sling some dirt at you and knowing you, you'd be like, okay, it's dirt. I'm not going to sling it back. I just don't see you getting in the mud, as they say like that, uh, and, and doing a good race and, and, and standing on these on healthy grounds, so to speak. But I, I wish you all the luck in the world. And, and, and again, give the folks what, you're, what, what, what you stand for, what, what you're going to be running on, what your platform is going to be, so they're very well aware. And then if there's a way that they can get in contact with you, because when you do these kind of things, you also need um, uh, financial help to do some of the things that you need to do. And I don't know if all that stuff is set up, but if you, it is, please give them all that information. Well, I want to thank you 
for having me here. Sure. It's a, it's a, it's a good memory to see you again. Absolutely. You haven't aged. <laughs> <and bet. laughs> they know what to say. <laughs> anyway, so, well, I just been in Houston for 45 years. Houston's been good to me, to my family. Absolutely. My my two sons, my daughter, my wife, my uncle, my wife, my my sister, they, they work for Beamer. And I want to thank you, especially the the black community. They've been so supportive of my business. I would say without them, probably I won't be there. I would be mm-hmm. very small, you know. But I just want to say to this that I, I'm running for mayor because I want to make, I want to be a different mayor. I want to be the mayor of the people. That probably when I become a mayor, I can have a, like, a, like a little uh, uh, station in the morning. People that can call me up and say, hey, and I can listen to the concern. Because I want to be able to see water leak fix, grass cut, the pothole, the homeless. I want to be able to control the, the crime problem in Houston. Because everyone has a chance to live and to be Every person that's born has a purpose in life. Some of us, some see that we don't see the light. So we need help those people because they're human too. Absolutely. To help them better life. That way we can all benefit. Like right now with crimes, everything that we purchase, Home Depot, Macy, it costs 30% more because they already, they already cost factor how much stuff they're gonna, people take from them. So if we reduce crime, price will come down. Uh, people will come to Houston and, and, and pull company here. So we can, like they say, when the water flow, all boat goes up, right? <laughs> so they say. So that's what I'm running for. I have a vision for Houston that I'm not a politician. I'm not, I'm, I'm not running for the money because I never look for money. I just work for opportunity to come my way. So I'm running because I want to be different, not the same, same uh, offer the customer, the, I mean, the, the people of Houston promise, and then you go to office and you forget about it. <laughs> I can't do that. I won't be able to live. And look at my granddaughter, Maya Maya. I run for mayor. They gave me the opportunity. I didn't do anything. Mm. I can't do that. So life is too short. I want to do what is right for the people. Because the other day we were gonna die. Yes, sir. But I wanna I wanna leave a legacy. Maybe a little stature, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> little one. Little. little. <laughs> anyway. So, so my name is Julian Antonio Martinez. Yes, sir. They can reach me at my cell number. It's okay. 281 802 4493 Or they can go at jmartinez 2024com and you can give a little money, ten dollars, five dollars. I'm not greedy. A little bit help, because mm-hmm. besides, I need the people, not the money. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Julian, good luck, man. <laughs> Julian for mayor, huh? We're gonna make it happen, my brother. <laughs> I'm gonna need you, my administration, <laughs> huh? And thank you. No, thank you, thank Mr. Martinez, man. To make man. it friendly. No, nah, thank you, man. I really appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. I hope man. I didn't speak too fast. No. <laughs> no. I like this guy. Thank you.